Let's kick off our Q&A with uh, questions from the chat box regarding chemotherapy for thyroid cancer. He mentioned here that chemotherapy is in the conventional sense and chemotherapy sa thyroid cancer ay ang um, TSH suppression kung saan pinapain ng levothyroxine. But is this true for all types of um, thyroid cancer? Uh, would a uh, neoadjuvant uh, therapy play a role in this uh, type of cancer? Maybe Dr. Matic can answer. As said by Dr. Latanko, chemotherapy is uh, rarely used no, for thyroid cancer. It's, re- it's reserved only for cases of anaplastic, as you have mentioned, and for those other types of cancers that are repeatedly recurring, even if they're uh, well differentiated, but they keep on recurring even after uh, doing surgery, doing radioactive iodine, uh, ablation, and uh, thyroid suppression. They still keep coming back. Then there might be a role for chemotherapy. But in general, in general, uh, um, there's a little role for uh, uh, for chemotherapy for thyroid cancers, except for anaplastic thyroid cancers, as you have mentioned. To follow up with that question, would the uh, neoadjuvant uh, therapy also help in downsizing tumor um, in cases of the anaplastic type? When you say new adjuvant is that you give the chemotherapy and uh, chemotherapy before the surgery in order to uh, shrink the tumor. Uh, the first line of treatment would still be surgery. We would like to do the surgery first before giving the chemo. So the chemotherapy, the new adjuvant chemotherapy, would be probably be reserved for those cases where it's uh, un- unresectable already. So in essence, it becomes somewhat a palliative. Uh, palliative chemotherapy. In some successful cases, probably, if they were able to shrink the tumor, then we can probably resect or do the surgery. But still, the prognosis is not that good, even if we do a new adjuvant chemotherapy. That's a sad thing. Fortunately, it happens in 1% or less than 1% of these uh, of thyroid cancers. Thank you, Dr. Matic. Um, we have a question for Dr. Lutan. How do we manage post-thyroidectomy patients who have vocal cord paralysis and hypocalcemia? Number one, when, you, when we talk about vocal cord paralysis, you have to check first what is the patient's main problem. Is the patient aspirating a lot or does the patient just want to improve their voice? Um, as mentioned in my lecture, what the goal should be is to medialize the vocal cord, the paralyzed vocal cord. So there are what we call vocal cord medialization procedures um, where they inject some form of silicone, some form of fillers. And the goal is to have the vocal cord come from something like this and you push it into its medial or its very basic proper position. There are surgeries that you can do as well to make uh, to make this happen. There are multiple kinds of procedures to be done. There are injections and there are surgeries. So it depends on how much or what the patient wants. Now, in terms of hypocalcemia, of course, the goal is to correct the hypocalcemia. Again, these are usually done through medications. If your patient, again, has a lot of heart problems, if you can see that your patient has ECG changes, you have to give IV calcium gluconate because you want to correct the calcium as fast as possible. But if your patient has minor, minor symptoms, you can actually give oral calcium supplements and these can correct your patient's calcium on its own. I have a follow-up question. How soon do we have these procedures done, the vocal cord medialization? Or um, is the when do we say that the vocal cord paralysis is uh, temporary or permanent? Normally, we wait two to six months because um, within that time, your nerve usually heals. So if, if you're, for example, you were able to see that your, that your nerve is properly identified, it's intact, there's no injury, but your patient for some reason presents with hoarseness, has vocal cord paralysis, you can wait up to, up to six months for the nerve to heal. Okay, so if the nerve heals within six months, usually the voice comes back the patient does not present anymore with hoarseness. But if it's more than six months, we can say that there's permanent vocal cord injury, okay, or permanent nerve injury. And that's when we start considering all these other interventional uh, methods.
world moves in real time. So should our healthcare technology. With information needed, decisions to make, and experience to share. Every second counts. Live integrated tele-ultrasound enables real-time communication, remote collaboration, confidence, knowledge, and learning. The first ever integrated tele-ultrasound collaborative platform. Philips Lumify. Integrated tele-ultrasound, powered by React's collaborative platform. Innovation and you. Philips. Um, our viewer asked if uh, there's a need to continue the methimazole if the patient's hyperthyroidism already resolved. I think regarding this, we have to find out first what the etiology of the patient is. Um, is the, does the patient have um, have Graves, Graves disease? Does the patient have um, thyroid adenoma, toxic adenoma? We have to find out first what it is. It's really hard for us to say that the patient should just stop because maybe the patient became well, became norm, became new thyroid because the patient is on metabolism. Most of the time, hyperthyroidism um, does not resolve spontaneously, okay? Meaning if a patient has Graves' disease, it's an autoimmune disease. The problem is there, as well as toxic adenomas. So these patients might need metamazole or some other form of um, antithyroid drugs so that they can live normal life. Now, we need to know what the etiology is, okay? Because goiter is a very generic term, no? Um, when in the Philippines, people go around saying, may goiter ako, may goiter yung kakilala ko. But goiter is actually a spectrum of disease. It can actually mean cancer. It can actually mean just a benign nodule. And of course, it can mean the hyperthyroid or the hypothyroid um, spectrum of thyroid diseases. So we need to know where does our patient fall. That is actually how we can know if the patient can stop their, um, their methimazole or does the patient need additional treatment such as surgery for their problem? Lymph nodes found in the neck region, particularly the periauricular in location with coarse thyroid gland, but normal thyroid function test. Is it a sign of malignancy? Having uh, enlarged no, nodes or cervical lymphadenopathy, it could be of two reasons. It could be due to uh, infection. You, know, you have your acute infection, you have your chronic infections, or it could be due to a malignancy. And if it's due to a malignancy, uh, it could be anywhere. You know, uh, there are a lot of other uh, organs you know, that could, uh, that, the, the, where the primary tumor could, uh, could be. It could be from the thyroid. It could be from the, um, your organs in the oral cavity. You know, it could be from your larynx. So with the limited information, I think it's hard to... To say a uh, uh, certain, uh, to be certain, uh, that the uh, enlarged nodes in the periauricular area that the attendee, the participant is asking, is really coming from the thyroid. It could also be in the periauricular area, the, the parotid glands are there, you know, the submandibular glands are also close by. So it could also be a tumor from the salivary glands. It's really hard to be certain without seeing the patient, you know, without uh, us doing the physical exam and probably doing some. Uh, imaging like the ultrasound. So I would just, uh, I would advise you know, the, the one who asks a question to have a consult with, uh, with her uh, neighborhood uh, surgeon or neighborhood doctor, <laughs> uh, someone's close. No? Just to be sure, I could say something serious, but it could be just uh, an infection which could easily be treated with antibiotics. So it's better to have it checked. If I may add, lymph nodes in the neck are generally normal, okay? Everybody has lymph nodes in their neck. Now, with ultrasound technology becoming more and more advanced, they're now able to detect more and more normal lymph nodes. 
okay? So a lot of the lymph nodes that a patient usually goes uh, sees when they have an ultrasound done is usually normal. So there's usually no need to worry. Now, there are criterias for us to say if a lymph node is suspicious or if a lymph node is possibly worrisome. And it has to do with size, it has to do with the texture, it has to do with the echogenicity, and these are all very technical. So again, I agree with Dr. Matic. Number one, it's hard to just say, may lymph nodes ako sa ultrasound, problema ba to? You have to see a surgeon or you have to see an endocrinologist or a thyroidologist so that we can say for sure that this lymph node, nothing to worry about, or this lymph node, let's do something more actively to work up for it. When do we say that a patient is already thyroid cancer uh, free? Yes, yeah, so usually uh, post-operatively, uh, the patient will have to see an uh, endocrinologist. Uh, she, uh, he or she will be the one who will administer the radioactive uh, iodine and as well as uh, be the one who will uh, initiate the thyroid suppression therapy. They're usually the ones who are in charge of giving the medication. So although... Although the surgeons, no, as uh, as surgeons can do it, no, but in practice, no, uh, in reality, they're the the endocrinologists are the ones who are usually in charge of this. No, so the uh, their usual follow up with the endocrinologist is usually three months. No, uh, uh, they usually ask them to repeat the thyroid uh, the thyroid hormones or T three T four uh, their TSH no every three months. No, then um, for us surgeons, no, uh, initially we see them after three months. Then, uh, then if everything seems okay, then we can um, prolong the follow up to six months. Then probably uh, after a year, just uh, have it done yearly. Uh, we usually test for the uh, for the thyroglobulin. We have it requested to check for any. That's our marker for any recurrences. And probably an ultrasound, also a repeat ultrasound of the neck area to see if there are any uh, recurrences of the thyroid gland or uh, or uh, there are any lymph nodes that are starting to enlarge. No? So we might need to investigate on them or do biopsy on those cervical lymph nodes if needed. For a person to be labeled cancer-free, it's usually uh, they should be cancer-free for five years. I think it's the same you know, for... Uh, the different cancers. Now, if the patient is cancer-free, there are no recurrences for the fa- for five years. Uh, they're usually uh, labeled as cancer-free. No, but uh, even if they're cancer-free, their follow-ups uh, should be at least uh, every six to twelve months. No, until that's lifetime already. Uh, so just to uh, stay ahead of the cancer. No, we, there are some uh, in instances or cases that cancer can occur after. 10 years, 15 years, so just to play it on the safe side, uh, we would want to see the patient uh, at least once a year. Thank you, Dr. Matty.